my Niners faithful, so you probably saw our video on should the Niners sign Odell Beckham Jr. Here, less than a week later, we're having a video of Odell Beckham Jr. signing without the 49ers, but the Los Angeles Rams, who we happen to be playing on Monday Night Football this week. Coincidence? I think not. Well, on the bright side, at least we get that Josh Norman OBJ matchup. If Josh Norman can suit up, I know he's dealing with some injured ribs right now because he's a Niner, so he has to get hurt naturally. Odell Beckham Jr. would have fit perfectly into the culture of the 49ers, man. Come on. We love guys that love injuries. So he would have been a perfect fit. But no, the Niners, John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan, Monday morning press conference. Ah, oh, we can't afford him. Seven million. That's too much. Meanwhile, the Rams just work with a different bank account than everyone else in the National Football League. How? Literally. Two weeks prior to this, they go out there, trade for Von Miller. And is Von Miller a good player anymore? I don't know. but. He's an expensive player. They get him on their roster. Odell Beckham Jr. was one of the highest paid wide receivers in the league. Well, now he's on their roster, probably playing, playing for a better minimum. I haven't seen the exact contract details of it yet officially. But this, I think, speaks to a bigger problem with the Niners. What was your reaction when you saw OBJ sign with the Rams? My immediate reaction was, oh, it makes so much sense. So much sense, right? If you kind of look at the teams that they were kind of highlighting as for potential landing spots, for Odell Beckham Jr., where you saw the Packers, you saw the Saints, you saw even our Niners in a couple of tweets around there, and then even Seattle. I mean, if you had the choice to live between Los Angeles and Green Bay, Wisconsin, I mean, you're going to take Los Angeles. And I think he fits the mold there. He, he you know, he has a friendship with LeBron James, a uh, pretty hefty one at that. Uh, he has a house in Los Angeles already. So it just, to me, it just made sense. Uh, whenever it came out that he was going to be released, I was like, uh, yeah, the Rams are probably going to get him. Um, but I'm with you. The, the bigger picture of this is kind of a concern because, you know, why aren't they going to San Francisco, right? Like, why aren't a couple of these guys interested in going to our team and instead they're interested in going to a division rival? Uh, does the move from St. Louis to Los Angeles have to do a lot with it? Yeah, probably. That attracts a lot more players, a lot more free agents. Um, but still, the Niners are still a story franchise around the league, pretty respected franchise. It is worrisome whenever we can't get some of these guys. Um, I was against OBJ going to the Niners, but in the bigger picture type of situation where maybe you, uh, down the road we see a couple of other guys that could really help the team choose not to go to San Francisco and instead choose to go to one of our division rivals, that's very concerning. Um, what, you, what the team has to do to fix that, I'm not too sure. We, we don't get paid millions to make those decisions, right, and to fix that problem. Um, but something has to be done. Something has to something really has to come forward these next couple of seasons. If it is with Kyle Shanahan, if it is with John Lynch, um, I think the immediate thing has to be winning, right? Anybody will join a winning culture. Well, it's kind of hard to win whenever guys don't want to play for you. See, you're approaching it from a little bit of a different angle than I'm approaching this one. You're approaching it from the players making the choice to not sign with San Francisco. I'm coming at it more from, I'm just disappointed that John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan aren't being more aggressive and approaching some of these guys because you know Seattle is going to be aggressive. You know the Cardinals are going to be aggressive. You know that the Rams are going to be aggressive. You have three aggressive teams in your division, and you're playing this kind of passive approach. We're even seeing how they're doing it with their rookie class this year. This passive, if they start, if they redshirt, it's okay. You know, we just want to get them in our building and develop them. Well, that's fine and all, but if you're going to set the standard – at we want to be a team that's competing for a Super Bowl or a team that's going for a playoff spot or a team that's trying to actually do anything in this NFC West, then you have to match the same energy of the opponents around you. And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't seem like the Niners are willing to do that. It doesn't seem like they're willing to accept that something that we all should accept at this point, that the salary cap is pretty much a myth. It's this mythological creature, kind of like dinosaurs are a myth to keep time travelers from traveling back in time. Yeah. I'm just putting that out there. YouTube conspiracy theory, add it to your resumes there guys. No, but seriously, uh, you know, my, I think is like, I look at all these other teams that come into the season with limited salary cap space. They move some stuff around and make deals happen. Why can't the Niners do that? What is the main thing preventing the Niners from making these aggressive approaches? And I, for the life of me, can't really figure it out because this whole studs and duds way of cap management that the Rams have incorporated into their building where we can keep our studs and just surround the team with some duds and we'll just kind of like balance the cap that way. 
it seems more efficient than what the Niners are doing. Hell, look at the Rams. I mean, the last four years, their worst finish is nine and seven. The Niners playing all this cap management games, trying to stay under the cap, pay their guys, all that. And they still are struggling to finish over 500. And not just OBJ, not just Emmanuel Sanders. You talk about guys like DeForest Buckner. We can't keep those guys in our building. We have to say, oh, you know, DeForest Buckner, we have to pay him extra three or four million extra than he wants or than we would have to pay Eric Armstead. Letting DeForest Buckner go was one of the worst mistakes that we've made as a franchise. And I think we just keep letting these kind of guys walk at the building. We don't bring guys into the building. We're just not an aggressive team in an aggressive era of the National Football League. And I think that's a big problem. Do you think part of it has to do with the fact that John Lynch is still, he's a rookie general manager. Yes, I, I'm with the abundance of 49ers fans who thought he was a great hire when he was first hired as a general manager. Do you think that has a lot to do with it? The fact that he's never really done this before, right? This is his first time, his first go around being a general manager. It's not an easy job. It's not like us going to career mode on Madden and there's just signing any player that we want. Does that have to do something with it? See, here's the thing. I, I would say that passing on these guys or not keeping these guys would be more forgivable if you were hitting on draft picks, which is another thing that the Niners aren't really doing right now. I mean, aside from Debo and Fred Warner, it's been pretty lackluster as far as the Niners draft picks over the last few years. Ayuk, jury's still out on him, but we've went through this list multiple times, but it's looking like a lot of us. I mean, you look just at the 2017 first round, Solomon Thomas, Ruben Foster, 2018, Fans don't feel great about McGlinchey right now. By the way, he's out with a quad injury rest of the season. Uh, 2019, you don't get credit for Nick Bosa. He was at two and was kind of a no-brainer decision. And then 2020, I mean, Javon Kinlaw, I mean, Dante Hittner called him a bust straight up a couple of weeks ago. And Ayuk, again, I'm still willing to hear you out on Ayuk. I mean, we saw some flashes last week in the Cardinals game to say that the guy's still good. But you also have these other decisions, trading up for Dante Pettis, trading up for C.J. Beathard, getting Joe Williams, trading up for Ambry Thomas, who can't see the field, or our second rounder, Aaron Bangs, Trey Sermon, you traded up for him too. He's not seeing the field, which is a little bit more forgivable when you have Elijah Mitchell. So the fact that you're struggling in the draft, you're struggling bring in free agents, it's kind of a death sentence to your long-term chances as a general manager, as a front office guy. And technically, I want to say, didn't we even elevate Adam Peters to GM, actually? So I don't believe John Lynch is actually technically our GM anymore. I was thinking about this. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, he kind of just carries that title, right? Because he was the one that kind of makes the decisions anyway. So, I mean, the responsibility still has to fall on him when it comes to personnel, I believe. Him and Kyle Shanahan. Well, that's the other question that Niners fans have to always think about. Is it Kyle Shanahan that's actually running the personnel decisions? That's one of the things that like, I, I think Niners fans have really questioned in recent years. How much is John Lynch? How much is Kyle Shanahan? Because you have some of these guys that Kyle brings, or we think Kyle brings in, Kyle loves, and then they don't see the field. So was that more a John Lynch guy? Was that a Kyle Shanahan guy? Which I mean, is it? And I think, I think the fact that we don't, we don't know the answer to that is a problem. Like We should know who's really calling the shots when it comes to personnel, when it comes to changes mid season, when it comes to, you know, changes in the roster, we should know who's making the, who's making the shots, who's calling the shots. And if it's Kyle Shanahan, (laughs) this goes into some stuff that we were talking about last week too, that how much more leash does Kyle Shanahan continue to get as a 49ers head coach? What's the move next year? If we finish under 500, is it fire John Lynch, fire D'Amico Ryan's, bring in a veteran defensive coordinator, bring in a guy that's going to be strictly personnel and doesn't listen to what Kyle Shanahan says at all regarding personnel decisions. That's where the Niners kind of are. So I think that this is a bigger issue than just OBJ signs with the Rams. I think that this is an issue towards the culture and the player evaluation standpoint for the Niners and how we manage this cap, even if it, we accept it exists, if it exists, then we probably should be doing a little bit better job of utilizing it because, again, going back to a guy like DeForest Buckner, if it really the difference was between him and two other guys, well, who are those two other guys? Because now now I'm seeing, I I think, even DeForest Buckner and two scrubs might have been more valuable than no DeForest Buckner and basically two scrubs because that's what we got now. 
Yeah, I'm right. I'm right there with you. I mean, it is kind of frustrating to see some of these things not go our way, right? Uh, where in the past, whenever Niner teams were a lot more competitive year in and year out, you would see them sign guys um, that ended up making an impact them midseason. We just haven't been seeing that other than Emmanuel Sanders. I can't really think of anybody that we picked up midseason that made that huge of a difference to our team. And that is a problem. I agree with you. Um, but now uh, OBJ is a Ram and we happen to be playing the Rams on Monday night football. What do you think that does to us? Uh, does that hurt the preparation that D'Amico Ryans has to do? I mean, is it going to be something difficult for us to prepare for, or is it maybe could it be used to our advantage? See, I would have to have any confidence in our guys being able to cover these wide receivers going into the game with OBJ out there. I have less confidence in their ability to do that. I guess, again, we get to see Josh Norman and OBJ potentially scrap it out if they're both on the field, but that's about it. I think if you're the Rams, what do you do? Just do the old school DPI, throw it in the air and hope for the best kind of thing because that seems to work well in the Niners. They say Jimmy Ward was practicing a little bit, so maybe he's out there. We saw that uh, two rookie uh, safeties wasn't exactly a formula for us to win, or not even rookie safeties. I believe Tavon Wilson has some NFL experience, but still – Two backup safeties at minimum in the NFL was not the answer. Our quarterbacks aren't great. We have to have some sort of pass rush, which the Rams have a decent O-line, so generating a pass rush isn't going to be easy. We're going to have to do a lot offensively to be able to carry ourselves in that game if we really want to have any chance of winning that. So I don't expect much from D'Amico Ryans. In fact, my expectations are we're going to allow 30 points. And the only way we win is if we score 35 to 40 points. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Um, and and you, you touched on it perfectly there with generating pass rush. We just cannot generate pass rush against anybody. Um, you mentioned it. Even before OBJ got there, that was still a good wide receiver core. They still have Tyler Kigby, who could catch uh, out of the tight end position. So it was already a challenging game to begin with. Now you add the extra wrinkle of Odell Beckham Jr., who might not, might not make an impact uh, in this week's game. But remember, we actually finished the season – week 18 against the Rams. So by then we'll probably see a little bit more of them using OBJ and, and where they could really hurt us and potentially end our season. If our season isn't ended by then. <laughs> Not just that we can't even contain the run. Daryl Henderson probably is going to have a yeah. good game on us too. James Conner was looking like Derrick Henry last week. So why should it be surprised if Daryl Henderson has a great day as well against our team? Basically the defense is struggling. That's a bottom third defense. Let's call a spade a spade there guys. All right, well, Niners Faithful, let us know your thoughts. When the OBJ news struck, what was your thoughts in the comments below? Want to hear from you. Leave a like on this video. helps out the channel. helps us get out there to more Niners fans. Obviously, our Arizona reaction did really well. So thank you guys for tuning into that one. Subscribe to this video. helps us even more. 49 reasons to listen. Two reasons right here. Juju Talk Sports, Jose Corral. We'll see you next time.